Thank you, Brother Tom. Did you hear that little thing all the barn? God, there, if you will. I almost got out of it. I got in here, and I had got the flu. <laughs> and I promised to be here, and I said to Brother Neville, and I had Brother Cox to come up and tell him, I said, tell Brother Neville to go ahead and have his son, because I'm the horse. I can hardly make a squeak, and he said, come back to you, Brother. Come up, Brother Bill, and be a good thing. So I, I'm always willing to make some sort of an effort. <laughs> Uh, I'm really too hoarse to preach to you, but I can talk to you just a little while by the help of this little gadget here. Uh, every time when I come to Indiana, uh, I get hoarse. I don't know why, but I, I do every time. I take a cold. It's the low right there. I drop down in here and it just looks like I just can't keep from it. I pray. It looks like it comes anyhow, but... But I always try to do the best I can with what I have to do with. That's the way I've always tried to do the best that we can. That's all God respect, uh, expects, brother. Excuse me. That's all He expects. Now, I trust that that our Lord will bless you all and will <coughs> give you a great blessing throughout this service this uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The service is to go on tonight, tomorrow night, Dr. Burnett. Just goes right on tomorrow night. I got to come down here and then leave here and go over and speak to a group of missionaries in Louisville. I think, I think it's 17 or 27 nations represented at a missionary rally. They want me to have a few minutes over there tomorrow night. Sun Sunday morning is the, uh, what is Lay your hand right on him, brother. Our Heavenly Father, we pray in the name of thy beloved child, Jesus, just at this time, that thy mercy may be extended to us tonight in the way of healing of our brother, the man sitting there who seems to be very sick at this time. He said, Confess your false ones and then pray one for another that you may be healed. And I pray with these people tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus that you will heal our brother at this time. As our brother stands there with his hands laid upon him, representing the hands of our Lord Jesus. And we together join our prayers and send them to thee in Christ's name that our brother may recover quickly from this sickness that he has. Amen. Lord bless you, brother. You know, give him a little air. He's kind of pinned in there a little bit. Why, let him walk out. If you want to walk out, sir, why, go right ahead and get your seat in the back of the building there where you get through some air. Now, the Lord Jesus knows all of our troubles. He is our burden barrier. And now, Sunday morning, early, 6 o'clock, sunrise service. How many like sunrise services at Easter? We're expecting a great blessing. So then, if the Lord willing, I'll have the sunrise services at, from 6 until 7. And return home to your breakfast. Be back. And at 9.30, the regular Sunday school service, Brother Neville will be here. And immediately after the Sunday school service, I'll have baptismal services for those who are to be baptized Easter Sunday morning. If you haven't been baptized by immersing and desire so, and you're a Christian, believe in the deity of the Jesus Christ being the Son of God, and want to take your your place in our fellowship to be baptized, we would be happy to have you here Easter morning about 10.30 for immersing Bring your garments, and if you do not have any, of course, why, especially the women, they have robes in there, different sizes for the ladies. I don't think they have yet for all the men. But we're very happy to have you here with us uh, Easter morning. Then uh, Sunday afternoon is a funeral service to be held from someone who lived out in the country or somewhere from here that was... I believe was converted here under Brother Neville's preaching here some time ago. 
I believe the name is Yeast or is something or other. They called me from the funeral home and asked if I and Brother Neville and a bunch of us would come and sing and have the services for Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock at the Motash Funeral Home. I don't remember the lady, Yeast, Yeast or Yeast. Many of you seen it in the paper, I suppose, tonight. And it, yes. Edna Justice, you may know her. She's perhaps a young woman, is she? Is that right? So a young woman. I believe the, her mother was calling me and said that she leaves two or three little children. That's sure too bad. It just goes to show the evil of, of this mortal life, doesn't it? But in, if she was in Christ Jesus, she's far better off tonight than any person sitting in this world. Amen. She's walked through the valley of the shadow of death that all mortals have to go, and yeah. someday you and I'll have to journey that way too, but we'll not have to cross Jordan alone. Amen. He is our Savior. So we, we, if you desire to come to the Motaz Funeral Home, which is located on Maple Street between uh, Walnut and, um, you know, I believe it's Locust and Wall Street on the right-hand side as you go west, uh, I don't know where they're, what is the number like? 221. 221. It's where the old Scott and Holmes, you know, and that's for Sunday afternoon and um, 2 o'clock, and then Sunday evening, the regular Easter services here again, we'll probably be preaching the, the death, burial, and resurrection for Sunday night, and we just don't know what our Lord will do for the following week. Coming on, whether the services will continue or just what for the coming week. We trust that you will all be be here Sunday it can be. You recognize many of the preachers around. Somebody told me that Mr. Fuller was here that was used to be or come to our meetings as the man here. Brother Fuller, aren't you the man that used to take me in New York from place to place? So down to me. Happy to see you, Brother Fuller. The Lord bless you. And I've seen another little minister here that, that Brother Tom didn't know. I don't even know the boy's last name, but I know they call him Junior back there. Uh, Jackson, Brother Jackson, Junior Jackson. Just raise up your hand, Brother Jackson. We're glad to have you with us. He's been down around Elizabeth Methodist Church down there for him to hold a service pretty soon. The Lord willing, before we go back into the field. Now, the great call to India and everything is going denser and denser every day. Pray for me. Now, tonight, this is Good Friday. It's a night that when we all, I guess, in Jerusalem, but this time it sun's up pretty well now on Saturday morning. But all day the people have crawled up that same old path there where the cross drug out the bloody footprints of the barrier. Tears afflicting their souls, crying. Many great cathedrals and so forth today have celebrated this great memorial time as there ever was a time that the world ought to be celebrating this now, this hour of trouble. And um, I wonder if our sister sent us a little organ here. I, I love an organ. I'm just a kind of old fashioned. Now, I wonder if we could uh, get a chord on that, Jesus, keep me near the cross. Just one of those good old-fashioned heart songs we used to sing a long time ago. And I wonder if we could all join in on that. I love it. There's a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream that flows from Calvary. Now, how many know the verse of it anyhow? Aren't you drawing that in with me now? And now let's just pull down the curtain around us and set our minds to some 1900 years ago this afternoon. What a sacrifice. The world's ever known nothing like that. Shut the whole world. And now, don't you want to stay near that place where you're in a place of fellowship and blessings with him? Let's all sing it now, just the old-fashioned way, now, don't you? Just, just the way you sing it, just by yourself now. All right. 
Brother Tom, you help me lead it, will you? I haven't got much of a voice now. All right. All right.
as we rededicate our lives and our uh, hearts, the tears of our hearts drop down deep in our bosom when we think of the sacrifice. Help us now, for we ask that in Christ's name, amen. just want to read a little now. If you'll give me your undivided attention for a little while and pray for me. <clears throat> In the Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, we have probably today heard radio broadcasts and so forth. I just thought of Christ today. I couldn't help him going out somewhere and just kneeling down, and I just had to weep when I thought of or my mind went back to see what taking place there, child. I didn't get to hear any of the radio programs, but perhaps out of the gospel they preached, and maybe tomorrow night we'll approach it from that standpoint. But tonight, let's go back in the Old Testament. I want to talk on the cruelty of sin and the penalties that it costs to, to rid sin from our lives. In Isaiah 53, the prophet anointed 712 years before the coming of the Lord. He said these words, Who has believed our report? To whom of the arm of the Lord is revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and a root out of dry ground. He has no farm or common. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of man. A man of sorrow, acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were of our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our grief, carried our sorrow. Yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted. He opened not his mouth. He, he was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shears is done, so opened he not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgressions of my people he was stricken. He was made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he has done no violence, neither was there deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When thou shalt make a soul, or when thou shalt shall see his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed and shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. If I would call it a, a scripture text, so now I take the sixth verse, all we like sheep have gone astray. The Lord turned every one to his own way, and the Lord laid upon him the iniquity of us all. I want to talk just a few moments. We're always happy when it comes to having the joy of the Lord in our midst, and how I rejoice with you greatly. But did you ever stop to think what it costs to have it? Did you ever realize just the price that's behind it? What judgment was and what the penalty of sin? How cruel must sin be when it calls the Son of God to go to Calvary and God to strike him and turn his face from him and smite him and, and they'd be afflicted. Look who he was. Now, I want to draw just a small picture to you talking now. Let's all of us take a little trip tonight on a, a little uh, a ship, and let's, a little spaceship or airship. Let's go back a hundred million years before there was a world, before there even was a star or anything. And there you can see uh, n nothing but space, and all that space was God. In the beginning was God. And now we'll watch coming into existence a little white light 
We had caught like a halo, and that was the Son of God, the Logos, that went out of God in the beginning. And then that how that he is standing there, and he, in his mind, he began to think of what a world would be, and drew all this uh, picture in his mind. And he said, let there be light. And an atom split, and began to break forward, and an atomic went off, the first atomic explosion. And then them atoms begin to accumulate till it made into cinders as the moisture or whatever what it was begin to break and the atoms split. And after a while, there came a star, a piece of a, a missile that flew off and went sailing through the air. He watched it maybe for a few million years and then stopped it. He had no hurry. He was, had plenty of time forever. He was from the beginning to the end. There was no time with him. And then another flies off and he stops it over this way. What's he doing? He's writing his first Bible. The first Bible that was ever written was written in the skies, the zodiac. It starts out with the virgin. That's how he comes first. It ends up with Leo the Lion, the second coming. And he's writing his first Bible. The second Bible was written, was written by Enoch and put in the pyramid. The third Bible was written and the last one is this one. God always does things in threes. God is perfect in threes. He's perfect. <coughs> Pardon me. He's perfect in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He's perfect in justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's perfected in his threes. We are in his making, so we are perfected in threes. Soul, body, and spirit. And our bodies controlled of of nerves, of blood, and of cells, flesh, three, all perfected in three. Then he said, after he'd got all of that made, before he'd ever done anything else, I can see this little halo move over over this world, which was merely a cinder, frozen, hanging out there like a great uh, iceberg, and he moved it over near the sun, and he's beginning to turn it like that. Around the sun, it began to melt. The big ice glaciers tore loose. Texas is being formed, and the plains there, as we're talking how the icebergs come down through there, as best crowd just can figure out. And then the whole world, after it run down into the Gulf of Mexico and so forth, began to bundle up with water. And the world was out farm and void. Now we're in Genesis 1. See? Now, then God moved and separated the firmament from the waters, and he made the light, and then he created all his creation, and as he made it all, the trees come up, the plants, and so forth. What a beautiful setup he had. He loved it. It was beautiful. And he thought that was fine. So he couldn't just leave it in that state. He had to leave something with it. So he said, let us, plural, make man, plural, in our own image. Let us make man in our own image. So then when God made his first man... He was a spirit man. He was something on the order of God, or the Son of God, the Logos. That was the first man. Then he gave the man jurisdiction over the to lead all the animal life, just like the Holy Spirit leads the believer today. Go here, do this. Now, if we were perfect in submission to the Holy Spirit, God would lead us by the Holy Spirit just like Adam led the animals of that day. So he, he made them, and then when he did, he began to move upon, upon the idea then that, that he had made man out of the dust of the earth. There was no man to till the soil, no one to do work, no physical being. So he made man out of the dust of the earth. Now there's where I think that if uh, botanists or, or science and Christianity does not conflict one with another because science says the man came from a different life and uh, we say when you look at a man here he's in the image of God this is, was not the image of God to begin with this was the image of animal life and he uh, an evolutionist argues that we, I don't believe in the chain of evolution the way they do, all coming from the single cell, but I believe we evolute, certainly, the evolution of one man from another. But then when God made all of that and got 
uh, put the man in the, made him out of the dust of the earth. Now, not in his own image. He had already made the man. Then he breathed into him the breath of life, and he became a living soul. So the soul of man is the nature of the spirit. Now, when you're reborn, you don't get a new spirit. You get a new nature of that spirit. It's the same spirit, but a new nature of it. You take two men, stand them together, both look alike, and one of them is a sinner, and one of them is a, a Christian. One man say, I've got a spirit the same as you have, see? But one of them is a different, his soul, his nature is different. He's been changed. So then he breathed into this man. Now, I don't know how, how he made him. He, he put him in five senses so he could contact his earthly home and see, taste, see, and smell in here. And he made him in that manner. Now, those senses was not to contact God. His sense to contact God was his spirit, his soul was to con. The soul is sin if the soul shall die. Now, I'm going a long ways around to get something, but I hope you get every part of it so you can see exactly what God had to do at Calvary. Now, when this man, then when he put him in his senses, his five senses, and then the man, he was lonesome, so he made him a wife, a helpmate, taken from his side a rib and made a woman, a beautiful type there, all in type of God taking from the side of Christ the bride. See, God opened up Adam's side, taking a rib which a man had, one less rib and a woman in the structure of the, the body, and now God opened up the side of Christ in the at Calvary and taken out the bride. The church comes through the blood of Christ into the body of Christ. Amen. That's how we come in. It's through no other way. No matter what church you belong to, how good a man you are, how good a woman you are, you must accept God's all-sufficient sacrifice is provided way for your law. That's the only way that you can come in. It's through there. Now, there's only one way, and that's the door. Jesus taught that famous parable when he was here on earth. He said uh, the wedding supper was made and, and every man was given uh, a garment and he found one man there without a garment. He said, friend, what are you, how, how come you haven't got a garment? Now the oral custom of that, when the bridegroom invited every person he, he invited, he invited 50 people, then he had 50 rules. And he stood somewhere at the door, and every time a man come in, rich or poor, he put the robe on him. Then no one knew whether he was rich or poor. He all looked the same under a robe. And that's the way God does today. He gives the Holy Spirit, which is a type. Every man that he invites were all the same. Not this one called a little better than the other, and that little higher than this one. We're all the same in the sight of God. Everyone Amen. invited to the wedding Praise supper. The then... When he came in and he found one man now, now there's only one door to come through because there's where the garments is given out. And he found a man at the supper table without a garment on. He said, friend, what you doing here? Why haven't you got a garment on? And the man was speechless. He came in by a window some other way. He didn't come by the door. And every man that comes by Christ into the body of Christ receives the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, He's standing right there to put it on you just as soon as you come in. See? That's what he's promised, and that's what he does. Now, back there in the in the beginning in the Eden, then he made a wife for him or a helpmate. Now, you see these pictures in magazines sometimes of some artist. Uh, that's very poor inspiration. <laughs> if you see the E with hair sticking out like that and all oh, what a horrible looking thing, and say that was our mother. Why well, there would be no one in the world could admire that. I believe Eve was the most beautiful woman that's ever on the earth. That's right. When Adam looked at her, is he? He is. is Why well, it goes to show that strain comes right on down to human beings today. If it didn't, it'd be vice versa. So Adam taken Eve as his wife, and then when sin came in. And I have my idea of what that was. I don't express it in the church. Let's just have a little class of some sort of what the sin was in the beginning. But anyhow, what it did is separated them from fellowship with God. Now, here's the picture I want to get. Now, when God 
realized or some angel or some being had come up and told God that your son is lost. He's, he's sinned. He's fallen. Now watch the strain of man. The first thing is make himself a religion. A man, he's got some kind of religion. I was talking to a famous man here in the city the other day. He said, you know, my religion's brother, Branham, is keeping the golden rule. That's good, but brother, unless a man's born again, he'll perish. He's got, he's got to be born again. Now, the golden rule is all right. That's, a moral man can do that. But it's got to be all in the supernatural life. And you'll see what God had to do in order that we could be supernaturally born. Now, when then he sinned, he, he made himself a religion. Uh, word religion means covering. It's like something covered. It's a coat. is a... Is a a moral religion to me because it covers my being and your clothes is the same way. And it's a it's a, a covering. Now, notice then when Adam his fig leaves were all right as long as he didn't have to face God. But when he had to face God he realized his fig leaves was no good. And now friends you might think you're a pretty good person. And you might be. That's right. But when you come to face God, you're, if you haven't accepted God's provided sacrifice for you, you're lost and you'll know it. Amen. I stood by their sides, watch them die. See the doctors shoot high holes in their arms to keep them quiet. And hear them scream and carry on. Say, well, they're just beside themselves. I said, Doc, please keep it out just a minute longer. See? And you hear them when they... they Thank you, right? There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. Amen. But the end thereof is the ways of death. And Amen. every man that's ungenerate, unregenerated of God will go that way of destruction. You can't help it. Your own soul guides you. If you're born again, uh, you're bound to go up. If you're not born again, you've got to go down. Just as your, your own soul will do it. Just like a a magic wand that would open a door somewhere. If you haven't got the, the wand, the door won't open. And if you're not born again, you're just rejected automatically. That's all. Amen. Now, and then when I, I see there then, when they come out and God knew that they could not stand before him and he knew, and they were hiding, hiding back in some bushes, yet covered up. But they know their covering wasn't sufficient. Amen. And every man or woman that goes to church, today I was thinking of the cathedrals are ringing out, Amen. the bells are tolling and so forth like that, and people going to the church and making ready, and the women buying their Easter hats and so forth. What has this come to? Amen. My Oh, I can't understand what a rabbit has anything to do with the resurrection. Amen. Nor for a high Christmas tree has anything to do with the birth of Christ. Amen. It's pagan, friends. We got yeah. off the path somewhere. That's right. But now a real born again man or woman realizes because there's life within you, tells you that that's wrong. Is that right? Now, Watch Adam and Eve. Oh, my. When I think of that, I'll lose the thoughts of my influenza or what I have. Oh, I think way back in the beginning, watch you talk about blood. You're not long ago when they were figuring on out and the great Methodist council to taking all of the blood songs out of the Methodist hymnal. That it's not a slaughter block religion. That we don't we want something nice and dignified. Brothers, that's not the way God receives it. Amen. It's either when I see the blood I'll pass over you. Blood. God only substitutionary. There is is in only the life laid in the blood. You may eat the meat thereof, but the blood thereof, which is the life thereof, pour it up on the ground. See? Not eat the life. Notice how beautiful. How I think of that. Then God So Now come out here, Adam and Eve, and before I can bring you out, I'm going to 
to have to do something. So he goes over there on the hillside and gets the sheep, kill him, pull the skin off of him, let him die because God has to keep his word no matter how good a man you are, how good a woman you are, what you are is God, God's got to keep his word. Amen. That's the reason the Virgin Mary had to go to, up at the day of Pentecost and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost just like the rest of them did because she was born here as a mortal and had to be born again before she could go to heaven. Amen. Amen. Now look, lady. Let me tell you, just because the times have changed, God hasn't changed. Amen. You come anything Amen. short of that, you're lost. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now I'm only speaking in behalf of what God did 1,900 years ago today on Calvary to show you what a sacrifice that had to be made to pay this, and that's God's way. Amen. Now there's a way that seems right, but God has a provided way. Amen. If you always go in God's provided way, you'll never go wrong. Like if you start to go to Indianapolis or across the bridge, you say, well, here, is that little wool there? Yes, and just take right across this way. You'll be caught up pretty soon. Amen. That's right. You better get the blueprint, the map, study it out and see which Amen. way you're going. Amen. And then here is God's blueprint to glory. Amen. Study it out. Amen. There it is. It's blood sprinkled all the way. Amen. You can't lose the track if you'll follow the blood. Amen. 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 Just keep right with the blood and you'll be all right. Or is a bloody footprint every step of the way. Now, notice how God back there before he could do it, now he could stand, or even they could stand to receive. He'd kill them right now. He had to because he's sovereign. He has to keep his word. He said, the day you eat that up, that day you die. That settled it forever. Then I can see him back there when he killed these sheep. He said, with his sheep, brother Brown, I believe it. He was the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. And it was a sheep skin taken, throw them back in the bushes, and told them to wrap up in these and come out and receive. And I can see Adam and Eve pull these old bloody, flappy skins around them. Could you imagine the lovely, beautiful bodies of those two perfect human beings? Now, wrapped in bloody sheep skins. I can see him stand out there. God said, Adam, because you listened to your wife instead of me, then I took you out of the dust and dust you'll return. And Eve, because you listened to the, uh, the serpent instead of me, while you brought life, took life out of the world, you'll have to bring life into the world. I'll multiply your sorrows and your desire shall be to your husband and so forth. And he said, then... Serpent, because you did this, walked up. He wasn't a reptile. He was a beast. Walked up more subtle than all the beasts of the field. Bear me record. That's scripture. Walked up like a man. And he had deceived her. And he said, and because you did this, off comes your legs. And on your belly you'll go all the days of your life. And dust shall be your meat. As that, there they were. Judgment. God had to keep his judgment. Because he's spoken and he's God. He can't back up on it. He's got to stay. In order to be God, God has to keep his word. Amen. That's right. So there, I can imagine seeing that poor little Eve when she looked at Adam. Her long blonde hair hanging down her back. Those big Bright blue eyes that look like the skies where God has made them. The tears pouring down, mixing with the blood on the garments and flapping down around her body. Eve, Adam with his strong body, caught her and leaned her over on his bosom. And there the tears mingling, falling as it runs through the sheepskin, blood dripping down, blood all the way. There. Now he says, you have to depart out of my presence. And I see Eve and Adam with their arms around one another going, moving out like this. Them old sheepskin flopping against their legs, bloody beating on their legs. Then I can see all that space, which was God. God has no beginning of days, ending of years. He's forever and forever. I can see all that great space 
begin to move together like this, coming down to a funnel shape like that, and it moved right down as he began to eye that little couple going down through the Garden of Eden. Bloody skins flopping against her legs. He couldn't stand it, and it moved down. All it moved is down to the very heart of God, spelled L-O-V-E. God so loved. He just couldn't see him go. He called him back and said, I'm going to put enmity between your seed and Satan's seed. Then, when that was done, was the Calvary. When God himself came down to a woman born of a virgin. I would like to deal there just a little bit in Eden. Notice when they were driven from the garden because of transgression. All the blessings cut off because of transgression. And I think tonight that's what's the matter with the church. All the blessings are being cut off because of transgression. There you are, driven from the Garden of Eden. I want you to notice, here comes when Cain and Abel, the two sons of Adam and Eve, came forward to make an offering. I believe the great cherubim was at the east side of the gate and that sword whirling back and forth, guarding that gate there and entered into Eden. Notice, fire, the Holy Spirit, fire, guarding the gate. And today that's what guards the gate. Amen. If you're scared of Holy Ghost and fire, you'll never get in. Amen. By the sword of God, God is a consuming fire. Watching that tree, guarding that tree, Alive, and I notice. Then this is a beautiful picture. Oh my! I can see Adam or Cain and Abel rather toiling now or going out to make a sacrifice. I believe they built their altar right at the gate, at the throne, where they could worship. Amen. Notice here comes Cain. He probably worked all the year toiling doing everything he could to get the very biggest apples or the very biggest pumpkins or whatever he had, brought it up to the gate, built him an altar right there by the side of the gate in the presence of God, put all of his fruits and the big cow lilies and everything and laid them on the altar correctly, then knelt down and worshipped God. Now, I want you to, I hope this just soaks way down if it's never before you again. Now, notice if God only requires you to go to church, Cain was just as just as Abel was. Amen. Cain built an altar unto the Lord. Yes. You say, well, Brother Ram, I don't only do that, but I make a sacrifice. I pay the foreign missions. I, then things are all right. And so, all right, but God requires more. Cain did that himself. Amen. See? He brought a sacrifice. He worshipped the Lord. He knelt down and offered praise unto the Lord and said, Lord, here I am, I, here am I. And I brought you an offering. I built an altar. Amen. In so many words, I am a member of the church. Did it hit the bottom? Look, I am a member of the church. I believe in you. You'll go to the bottom now. It's so crazy. I am a believer in God. I have built an altar. I have brought a sacrifice. And here I am, Lord. I am worshiping you. God turned his back on him. Amen. Right. Amen. And Easter morning, like a pastor in this city said, you know what I do, preacher, on Easter morning? I said, what? But I tell all my folks, I bid them a Merry Christmas. So why? I said, I won't see them anymore until next Easter. Everybody comes out on Easter. That's all. Buy new bonnets and new clothes. What's that got to do with life? Oh, and there'll be millions of dollars spent this year, tomorrow, in the Protestant realm of lilies, great, beautiful lilies. Each member of 
the lily on the altar. He wants you on the altar. It's the lily. It's your sacrifice. You are the guy to be on the altar. That's the difference. Putting what God requires on the altar is you. Now, I want you to notice how that that strain, that was Satan in Cain. And notice that the very, how this ought to make you feel real good, some of you that's a pilgrim and wayfaring person. And we have to maybe say, well, I wish we could do this in our church and that. Be satisfied. Hallelujah. I'd rather worship in a little room somewhere, in the back alley, and have God in it in a cathedral with God. Tell 
to make her a living. When she went and got her permanent, I said I wouldn't let her sing because she wasn't fit to sing.
can do it's not by good works we're saved, but by His by mercy. Amen. Amen. Not by works lest any man should boast. Amen. For we are, for we are God's because it isn't what I am. It isn't what I do myself. It's what Christ in God has did for me. And Amen. No, beautiful type. Here he comes dragging the little lamb, pulling him along. I can imagine a little fellow falling, probably knew what was near, dragging his little feet, perfect type of Christ, dragging the cross, God's Lamb coming down through Jerusalem, falling weak. Here comes the little fellow blazing along, and when he got him up to the great rock, laid him up on the rock, taking a piece of sharp rock, I don't know, guess they had no knives in those days. Laid him like that, took him by the back of his head and pulled him up like this, took a knife uh, the rock and began to chop his little throat. And his, uh, the rock began to beat to his throat. On that rock died the lamb, bleeding, bleeding, blood splashing. His little arteries cut the blood pile all over his little white wool, become bathed red there with blood. God looked down from the heaven and said, That's that's the way the blood spurting from his little veins. What was it? Of the Son of God, 1900 and something years ago, this afternoon, he was led from prison. He was taken to the judgment seat, and from there to the hall of scourges, from there up Golgotha, pulled up the hill. Simon the Serene helped him bear the cross. And there died on the rock of ages with his blood beat out of him, his body striped. Hallelujah! Great big old gods of mocking soldiers spit upon his face. And he said, if my kingdom was in this world, I'd ask my father. He'd give me legions of angels that would come and fight me. But this is not my kingdom. When my kingdom comes, I will be done. It will be very soon. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done. Oh, my! When Billy said, he said, What time? That in every tree, said an angel, say, Just pull your hand loose and part your finger. That's all you have to do. We'll settle the question down here. I believe it's the truth. Caleb is look by and said, He saved others himself. He cannot save. He's the greatest compliment was ever paid him. Amen. If he saved himself, he couldn't save others, so he gave his life that he could save others. Amen. 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 Oh, we like sheep that have gone astray. God laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was led to the slaughter like a sheep. He was led like a sheep down the forest shears, open, not his mouth. Yet he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. How could you reject such massless love? To see him as he goes staggering up the hillside, poor little weak, frail body bending beneath the load. I think of the poet when he sat there that day. He caught a glimpse of it, and he wrote, "Mid rendering rocks and darkening skies." My Savior bowed his head and died. The open veil revealed the way to heaven's joy and endless day. What a Savior. Oh, my, how could we ever, how could I reject such master's love for one who would do that for me and you? I trust tonight, my brother, sister, that you will come. God, that was God's provided way. That's the way for you. That's the only one who can have anything to do with you. That's the one that took your place. That's the one that stands tonight. A resurrected Redeemer standing at the right hand of the Father tonight. Be begging and pleading for every sinner that's in this building to come to Him. I trust that you will. I trust that you won't let this, this Easter pass. Dear friends, we're at the end of the road. I believe we are with all my heart. We're down to the end of the road. May the Lord Jesus bless you. May He make you a new creature in Him tonight. It's my prayer. May He lead you. One time, uh, there was an old blind man in the Bible by the name of 
of Barnabas, O'Brien Barnabas. He had two little doves, we're told by history, that these little doves used to set out and do little tumbles over one another, and the people would would hold their, it always cup, and then when the the people would come by, they'd watch these little turtle doves do little tumbles, and they'd drop in coins for the old blind beggar. He's a married man, had a little girl. He'd never seen a little girl in his life. He's about 12, 14 years old at the stage that we're fixing to enter to his life now. And he was sitting, one night he said his little girl got sick. He went to the Lord and said, Lord, if you just heal my little girl, I'll sacrifice my two doves for you tomorrow. So they, the Lord healed his little girl and he sacrificed the two doves. After a while, his, the first thing you know, his dear wife got sick. She thought she, they thought she was going to die. So he goes out to the Lord in the night, feeling his way along the side of the wall of his house, knelt down the field and said, God, God, if you just spare my wife's life tomorrow, I'll sacrifice my lamb for you. Now, you see blind men led by a dog today. They train those dogs to lead them. In them days, they trained sheep to lead people. And so he had a, a, a lamb that led him around. And he said, Lord, if you just heal my wife, well, then tomorrow I'll sacrifice my lamb to you. And his wife got well. And the next day he was going up to the temple and said the high priest cabs that stood out, and said, Blind Barthemus, where are you going? He said, I am going up to the temple, O high priest, to sacrifice my lamb. I promised the Lord if he heal my wife, I would give my lamb. He said, You can't give that lamb, Barthemus, because as that lamb is your eyes. He said, I'll give you some money, and you buy your lamb. But the sellers in the temple, the Barthemus said, O high priest, I never promised God a lamb. I promised him this lamb. Oh, my. I wonder if you've made promises like that. If you see that all-sufficient lamb tonight. Lord, if you let me get well, I promise you I'll serve you. I'll do everything I can. If you let my baby live, or when you're standing, your mother was going down in the grave, your dad or your loved ones, oh, God, I'll meet him. I'll meet him again. I wonder if you're really I wonder if this Easter is sort of come and go without you fulfilling that what you promised. He went on up and offered his lamb. Come back, someone leading him around. So he said, then, we come back to Bartimus. You can't do that. The priest that went to take his lamb, he said, you can't take this, you can't sacrifice this lamb. He said, blind Bartimus, do you know that lamb is your eye? And he said, yes, I know that. But I promise God, and God will provide a lamb for blind Bartimus to die. <laughs> Not long after that, he was shivering in the cold one day. They heard a noise. God had provided the lamb for blind Bartimus to die. He came along the street. He said, what's all this noise? It's usually noise where he's at. He said, what's all this noise? He said, one Jesus of Nazareth passed by. He threw down his coat, not looking where it went. He didn't care then. God had provided a lamb. Amen. He got right to the lamb. He said, Oh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy. Have mercy. The rich people and those who stood around to get close to the prophet, the king, he said, Oh, be still. He can't hear you. He cried that much some more. Someone said, The days of miracles is past. There's no such a thing as that day. He cried the louder. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. God provided the lamb. That same lamb he provided for blind Bartimus' eyes, he provided for you 1900 and something years ago today as he climbed Golgotha Hunter and offered himself all bruised and hacked together. Listen, friends. Remember, Abel went out into his herd and got the lamb and killed it on the sacrifice block. And catch this now. Abel died on the same rock that his lamb died. Are you willing tonight to die out to yourself? Are you willing to die out to all the thoughts of your Just lay on the rock with your lamb there and die out there. Oh, God have mercy. When I think of men and women who think of pride, 
young men and women who will give their lives over to things, and men of age, too, thinking of their job and of their prestige and of their neighborhood or something like that. Oh, why don't you crawl Calvary under the night? Uh, hallelujah! Let your own life be hacked out and die under on the cross with him. Throw your arms around the rock of ages. Let me hide myself in these. While the narrow waters roll, while the tempest still is high, hide me over my Savior. Hide. Let the world do whatever they want to. Let the theologians do whatever they want to. I don't want their theology. What I want is Jesus Christ. Let me die with my lamb. Oh, I know how hard it was that night. I walked in that little colored mission out there. And all those white folks standing around there said, There he goes into a colored mission. It was hard. I walked up there with a whole lot of Kentucky pride in me like that. But God said, If you want it, walk out on in there. And I walked out in there and knelt down to an altar. And there I stayed until the lamb. I died to old self Bill Bradham 20 years ago. Hallelujah. I was crucified with Christ. Yet I live. Not me, but Christ lives in me. Someday in that glorious resurrection, when he comes, my body may be resting beneath the sod. But when it does, you'll see the grass move back, and I'll come forth in his great glorious image. Hallelujah. For I know him in the power of his resurrection. I trust that's what everyone of you do tonight. Crawl right up Golgotha out of tonight. Let's take a little trip now. While you'll give us the key, little you know, sister, of near on my God to thee. While we are, you say that's a funeral. Well, brother, if there was a time we need a funeral is right now. Amen. When man will die to their self and pride. Let's bow our heads silently now while she gives us a little card. If that's all right. Oh, God. Oh, and I think what happened. Oh, God. Even my bones tremble. I think of seeing that lamb. When they hacked him, yes, put arms on his head and pushed it down. The soldier spit his face and said, Thou king, I'll do something about it. He was a prophet of God. They put a rag around his face and hit him on the head with the reed and said, Now prophesy, tell us who hit you. But the prophet said he opened out his mouth and done told it. Tied his hands up behind him, stood off with a great whip, and lashed him till his precious ribs showed through his back. The blood running down his sides, trickling off on the ground. I hear him walk now. Out of his sandals, I hear the blood squashing. That was Emmanuel. That was God. God's blood. And I see him take, put that cross on his back, that old blistery. Ragged, rugged cross, and there he goes, laid across that sore back. <laughs> Down to the street he went, the howling mob. Why is it making fun of him? There goes that prophet. There goes that great Jesus. There goes that divine healer. Jesus, oh, my Lord. Oh, God, let me climb with him. There he goes up the hill. I see the young, half-dressed women running around making fun. Their boyfriends hugging one another as you go up the hill. Well, Lord, it hasn't changed too much yet. I see the great church members say, Look, that is the guy who's going to tear our church up, preach against our pastor. Look at him now. But the prophet said it must be that way. He was God's lamb. I see him as he turns his head and the spit sliding down off of his beard, rolls his eyes up to heaven, groans and moves a little farther. Lord, by faith, I want to walk that now with him. I want to pat him on the back and say, Lord, I'm standing here. Just tell me what to do. I'll do it. How I appreciate you, Lord. Yonder on the hill, when they laid him down, pulled his precious hands back, those hands that stood the fever, that hands that said to that poor widow woman's boy when it touched his brow or the casket he's laying in, he comes to life. That one who called Darkus back to life. 
that one who called your eyes his daughter to eyes, that one who said, Lazarus, come forth, and lips are bleeding now, parching, crying, as a great Cruel nails drive into his hands and in his feet. They pierce my hands and my feet, said the prophet, 700 years before it happened. What was it? It was Abel's lamb. There they slung him down in the ground. The flesh tore his poor body, quivered. Said, I thirst, they give him vinegar. They rowled and mocked and made fun of him. Said, you great miracle worker, do something about it now. Then the skies begin to get dark. Lightning begin to flash. God was hiding his face. He couldn't stand it no more. Oh, God, how cruel sin must be. How cruel, how cruel. To call that precious one to do that. Even such a price he paid till God himself hid his face. The angels veil their faces and turn around and weep in it with The moon and stars could not go any farther. They could not shine no more. The very God that created was dying on the cross. And he bowed his head. Before he did that, he looked down at them people gambling for his garment. Fulfill what the prophet said. Said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. All in love, Adam's land. God's provided land. Slain from the foundation of the world. There he died, friendly. Even forsaken by God himself. God and then his own father forsaken him. Bleeding. Yet we go around laughing, jealousy, just like nothing has happened. Oh, God. It was that blood. When yet in the hospital, the doctor said he's dying. But it was that blood that healed me. A little old sinner boy running out right here. It was that blood that freaked me in my sins. It was that blood that drunk. That taken me out of a debauch of the place that I was living. Set me and made me your son. Oh, poor dead, dying lamb, thy precious blood. Keep me near the cross, Lord. That's my vision. That's what it is. Y'all love all God's great heart moving down there. And all that comes by him will not be rejected. They'll all receive everlasting life. He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. God, may every individual here go home tonight with this on their mind, thinking of what a sacrifice. What did it cost me? What did it cost God? It never cost us nothing. But it cost God his son. It cost God the greatest prize. It cost Christ his life. He was the rose of Sharon. But to get the perfume out of a rose, you have to crush it up. His beautiful life was crushed at a young man of 33 and a half years. That we might live. Near my God to thee, stay near me, Lord. Stay near me. And when I come to the end of this road, my life is finished, Lord. May he who died there Come near me then. May everyone here be likewise. Tomorrow, Lord, or day after tomorrow, marry a little woman is sat here in this church one time. Listen to the sermon. Now I know it's all about her now. If she did come, she's safe. If she didn't, she's gone. Oh, God, have mercy. May every man and woman, as they leave this silly night, go to their home. Go thinking seriously. Nothing in my arms is simply to that cross. May each one die on that cross. Lord, while I'm here at this pulpit tonight, this little old concrete structure, I consecrate my life to you. I thank you for what you've done for me. 
And I consecrate myself anew this crucifixion, not memorial, to you. Take me, Lord. Forgive me. All my mistakes and troubles. Make me strong and powerful, Lord, in the Spirit of God, that I might win souls to you and bless this congregation. For we ask that in His name, forgive every sinner, reclaim every backslider, while we have our heads down. Every sinner, man, and woman in here just now. The boys, girls, all of you. Some of you young folks back there had to speak sharp to the other night. I hate you to do that. God bless your heart. You might call Brother Brandon was rough, but I, I love you. I said for you. I don't want to be here. That's the reason I said that. This is just what we love our God. I pray for you. Pray for you to be the consecration time. Some of you mothers and dads, you know, people, make some of the time of consecration that time. Set him in your heart. Bleeding with all your soul. Now, while every head bowed, would somebody like me remember this prayer and would it be great? So the brand new name me, I love so close to the door. Dozens of hands. Father, remember them all I say. You're very much blessed. Is this here as a Lord God? She can grip it off here and smile. Some of them in hands. Some of them in great, burly-looking, rough man here sitting there before me. Tears running down from the streets of the rank of Jesus. Receive us, Lord. Forgive every one of us who sent the divine presence of this Spirit of God tonight. Forgive us, Lord. Young and old, alike. May we be saved that day and take us to our kingdom. For we ask it in are you stand your feet quietly? Keep your head down. Slowly.